In today's video I want to show you how is the performance of the Rockchip 3588 in Android Gaming. This is the Megatronics R58, this comes with 8GB of RAM and the Rockchip 3588. But you should have the same performance in the Orange Pi 5, in the Indie Droid Nova or in the Armstrong C7. So I'm going to use this device as an example but the performance should be the same in all of them. So as you can see I have set up a lot of emulators, games and different applications in this device. This comes with a 7 inch screen. So let's check the performance of the Megatronics R58. As I said, we have the Rockchip 3588 as the CPU and the Mali 610 as the GPU. Also, we are using a 720p screen and in this device we have 8GB of RAM and 64GB of EMMC. Depending on the device and depending on the storage you are using, you may have a different performance. For example, in the Orange Pi 5, if you are using the microSD card, you are going to have worse speeds in read and write. In the Indroid Nova, you can use the EMMC or the SD card. And in the Amazon C7, you can use the EMMC, the SD card or the M2 slot that comes with the device. So a part of the technical specification, we also have 4 USB, 2R 3.0, 2 R 2.0, 2.0, we have a display port type C, we have HDMI out, we have the micro SD card slot and the micro SIM slot, we have the Ethernet port, and this device is very interesting because it has several HDMI inputs. To show you that, I have connected the Steam Deck to the Mechatronics R58 with the HDMI inputs that it has. So by default, it comes with the application called HDMI in, and you can select the three input so in this case I connected here the HDMI from the Steam Deck and you can see that here we have the screen if we click we can play any game we want and you can use this like a monitor for example for other SBCs like the Orange Pi 5 or the Indie Droid Nova or the Armstrong C7 so you can have this main computer attach it to other SBCs and have a home server setup with different SBCs controlled by this screen. Apart from that, this is Android, Android 12 and we have the Google Play Store enabled. So as I commented, I have installed a lot of different applications and I will show you the performance of the graphical part of this device. I'm using Android, but you can install Linux on the device, but for gaming, Android is better because it has the Vulkan layer, not just OpenGL. If we go to the emulation station, this is the front end I installed. I have a video on the channel about how to configure this, but you can check also the Retro Game Corps video, which is very good. So we can have several emulators. We have Nintendo 3DS, Nintendo DS, Nintendo Switch, but we are not going to be able to play these games. PlayStation 2, PSP and some Android apps. So let's check now the performance of the device. First, we are going to start with some Android gaming. For example, let's run Fortnite. Fortnite is not a straightforward installation, but I can show you in the video later how to install Fortnite in any SBC. Or at least I tried in this one, but I think it should work on the Orange Pi 5, on the Indie Droid Nova or the Armstrong C7. So I will show you the process because it involves installing Magix and modifying the super user binaries. So I will show you later. But for now, let's open the game. Well, as you can see, the game is running. This is not the cloud, this is Android native gaming. If we go to the settings, we can check that we are in 30 FPS. We are in low presets and with a 75% of the 3D resolution. So everything is low or off. We are not going to have the best performance, but at least it is playable. And I will show you a match, for example. Also, I want to show you that this is the game here Nova Light 2. I have a video with other accessories, so I will leave the video and the links to this gamepad in the description. This only costs $20 and I will try to find a discount code on Aliexpress. We are in 20 FPS more or less. You have the FPS in this part. The game lags a bit. But although the game lags a bit, we can play it. Now in the bus we are at 28 FPS more or less. We can open the map. Let's go to this point, for example. And we are at 
20 fps, sometimes a bit less, but most of the times we are near the 30 fps. I will leave all the timestamps so you can so you can skip to the game you want to check the performance or if you want me to try a certain game in particular just leave it a comment and I will try to test it. First kill. And now let's continue with other games. Let's close from the background apps and let's play Sunless Zone Zero, for example. Here to use the gamepad, we have to go to input and change to controller. And now we can use the gamepad. I'm using the low graphics because in medium graphics I feel like it lags a bit. So let's do a combat. You can see that the game lags a bit. You can play it, but when you change some characters or use some skill with light effects, you can see that the game lags a bit, so maybe this game is not well optimized. So you can play this game, but you are not going to have the best experience. As you can see, it lags a bit. Maybe because it's the first time it is loading some effects and if you play more and everything is compiled, the performance will be a bit better. But I feel like you can play bad, you are not going to have the best experience in this game. So now let's go with some emulation. Let's play something lighter, for example Nintendo DS. In Game Boy Advance you are going to play anything without any problem. Nintendo DS more or less the same. Let's run any game. For example, Nintendo Dogs. This is the drastic emulator from the World Play Store. We are going to need the touch screen for this game. But it runs without any problem, as you can see, at 100% speed. And you can also increase the speed if you want at 200 speed. So Nintendo DS runs without any problem. Let's go with something heavier. For example, let's go with PSP. And we are going to run, for example, God of War Ghost of Sparta. This is a game that is very heavy to emulate in general. But you are going to see that we don't have any problem here. I have loaded the game, so we don't need to see the initial videos. If we go to setting, we are using Vulkan at 4x resolution. As you can see here, we have the FPS and the speed. And we are at 100% speed, basically. And you can see that the game runs without any type of problem. So you can run any PSP game you want at a very good resolution. As I commented, if you want to run PSP in Linux, you are not going to have Vulkan. And for that, you are going to have very bad performance. And you are going to play most of the game at 1x resolution instead of 4x like we are doing here in Android. Now let's go with something even more heavy. Let's go with Nintendo 3DS and let's play some Mario Kart. Here in the top corner you have the FPS and the speed of the game. This is the touch screen, but you can swap between them. In this case I'm using Line 3DS and we are using Vulkan again and a 2x resolution because at 3x it's going to be very laggy. As you can see, we are not at 100% speed, 
but I think it's very playable at this 2x resolution and you are at almost 60 fps so this game runs without any problem So 3DS games at test resolution are a no-brainer for this machine. If you go higher, if you try to run it at 3x resolution, the game is going to be very laggy. So I think it's better just to keep this as at 2x. Let's move now to other emulator and let's go to PlayStation 2. In this case, I'm using Aether SX2. This is the last AP key available. But you can check my video on how to install Nether SX2. I will leave the video link in the description. Here we are in Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 3. If we check the settings, we can see that we are using Vulkan at 2x resolution. And in the top corner you have the FPS. We are between 50 and 60. And the speed, which is at 100%. So let's test in-game. We can see that it is very playable at 2x resolution. Let's try to go higher in the resolution. For example, let's put 3x resolution. Now we can see that the game is freezing, it's lagging a lot. We are at we are at 40, between 40 and 60 FPS, but the game lags a lot. So I think PlayStation 2, at least for this game, is enough with 2x resolution. So let's set up to 2x resolution. We have hit with the ultimate. So PlayStation 2 runs quite good on the Rock Chip 3588. We can run PlayStation 2, PlayStation Portable, Android Gaming, we can run Fortnite, we can run Solid on Zero, we can run Nintendo 3DS, so I think the performance is quite good. But with this device, usually what you want to do is use this like a server. So most of the time you're going to use Linux, but it is cool to have a device like this that you can set up an Android gaming machine here and play whenever you are. You can take this well, you can take this to other places and you can set up the PlayStation 2 emulator for example to play to play FIFA or the Pro Evolution Soccer with some friends because you can play for example this emulator with a couple of controllers and each player has a controller so you can play in local cooperative. And to finish with the video, I want to show you how I install Fortnite, because it is not an easy install. First, we are going to install the Epic Launcher as we do usually, so we can go to any browser, look for Epic, Android, and from the official page, we can download the APK for the Epic Games Launcher. You just need to click on Install on Android, you will download an APK, and you have to install the APK. Once the APK is installed, this is the game launcher, so you can install any game you want. So click on Fortnite, click on install. Once it is installed, you have to open the application, wait until everything is installed, and you will see that you can use the Fortnite launcher, the Fortnite application, but you're not going to be able to launch a match. You're going to have an error message saying that it is impossible to find a match. So this is because most of the Android images comes with the root permissions. So we are going to remove the default super user permissions and we are going to replace them with Magis. So first thing, we have to install Magis. To install Magis, I recommend you checking GitHub Magis. And this is the link to the official Magis repository. If we go down here, we can check in release and download the last version. Just click on the APK and install it. Once you install it, the first thing is click here on install. And this is very important, so just click on direct install and click on let's go. 
After that, you will have to reboot the system. Once you have rebooted the system, we need to use a file explorer with root permissions. In my case, I will use Solid Explorer, but this file explorer is paid, but you can find other free file explorer with root permissions on the World Play Store. So now we have to go to the main path, the slash path in the Android system, go down until you go to system, X bin folder here and here you see that I have this su all file but by default you only have a file called su so we are going to modify the name of this file modify and put anything else but not sudo and with that we are going to replace the default sudo binaries that comes with the android image so fortnite is not going to be able to detect that the android image is rooted after this, you have to go to the Magis application. You won't see a pop-up that you might see before modifying the super user binary, saying that the super user binaries are installed by default or something like that. But now you are going to have the installed version and we are going to go to the settings. Here go down until you see Thigisk. Check that both are enabled. And in the deny list, we're going to add here the Epic Game Launcher and Fortnite. After that, you have to reboot the device and you will be able to launch Fortnite and play any match. Please, if you find any error, just write a comment in the video and I will try to help you.